Well, both of y'all have known me my entire life. Uh, did you see this life for me being married uh, with children and living in the country? I saw your life mm -hmm. living in the country mm -hmm. from age three or four okay. when you went to North Carolina for the first time. Yes. And you were amazed at the freedom that you had and how you could run around right. um, at our aunt's house, your great aunt. And you would go out in the yard with uncle so that you could pick the eggs and you were just amazed. You would run back inside so excited. I got an egg, I got an egg. I saw the chicken let the egg. He said, I like this, I like this. Can I stay? And we told you you had to come back, but you had to come back to your mom. She said, but I don't See, want to go back. I had been there, I'd probably <laughs> left you. Because <laughs> they didn't tell me that you wanted to stay. No. Because no. see, if you, they had told me you wanted to stay, and you agreed on, she'd have kept you. She'd have raised you. Well, she would have raised him like he raised, she raised about seven, eight others. Yeah. Right? Because she never had children. Yeah. So, um, yes, but... Um, you wanted to stay, and then that's when you were first introduced to guns. Yes. Because you had the BB gun. Yep. And you were so excited that you shot the snake, and you always said you snuck, shot that snake right in the yeah, middle I'm, of his head. Like, <laughs> and I was like, well, okay, if you say so. <laughs> and you were just fascinated with that. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, you always wanted to grow up in an atmosphere of farm animals and on the farm and with your gun. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it took what, almost 40 years for that to happen? Hey. God's plan. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. That, that you had to walk in the truth. wilderness mm -hmm. before you could actually get what you needed and mm -hmm. wanted because he had to prune you. Yep. Well, uh, another part to that question, how, how do you see me as a leader in uh, in my household. Granted, y'all have only come out to visit a little bit, but you saw me married back in New Jersey. Uh, and uh, from what we talk about, what you see, how do you see me as a leader in my house, how I'm guiding my family, how I'm guiding my wife, how I'm taking the, um, the biblical wor word, translating it, uh, and living it. Well, I've seen since when you put it out in videos years ago about how the church that we grew up, I'm not going to do no nationality behind the church, and I had listened to some of your videos that you used to do on that particular subject. And it was very interesting to me because I never knew. Because you didn't come and tell me. No. But you put it on the video because I, as a woman, I, I really didn't know how to raise a man. But I think I raised you pretty well to be a strong black man. Even though you didn't have somebody that could really show you how to be a man. I know your uncle, he was in that. I don't know what he said, because I didn't question that, mm -hmm. what he talked to you about. Because I, it wasn't my job to question him if he talked to you about anything. Because to me, that was a private thing right. between two, a young man and a man. So I never questioned him of what he talked to you about because I don't know so to me he might have been in the process of helping you grow the best way he knew how because it was all women in the house he was the only male right so I can say maybe he learned when he left when he went to school going to school when he went away to college of how to be a protector so I can't say that might have stimulated him and say, oh, when I come back, I need to do, or, was he born there? 
I don't think Jeremy wasn't born when our brother went to school. No, you wasn't born because you were born in eighty. No. I'm trying to think. I graduated. You graduated. He left to go to school the year you were born. In 80 then? 80. Oh, okay. Oh, for college? For college. Oh, okay. I do believe he graduated. Because I'm... Yeah. I thought he... Yeah, and he's I nine could... years behind me. And he graduated three years bef after, after you. Right, because I graduated 77, 78, so now 80. Oh, okay, so he did. But it, did you know what? Matter of fact, we was at the, his graduation with me in and your arm. arm. <laughs> Matter of fact, <laughs> yeah, he sure was. But he went off to college that wow. September. Y'all took him to college down in South Jersey. Yes. You and mom. Yep. So yes. that's why I say he might have learned. So by the time he came back, he was more of a man being on his own and experiencing that life. Okay. Yeah, so. Cool. But I still disciplined you. Yes, yes you did. I was a disciplinary <laughs> person. I don't care what time I got home, your grandmother was ready. Get him. He did. Da -da -da -da. Okay, because <laughs> last time I beat you and I took you to the basement, she come running down the steps. She was scared <laughs> yep. <And> for you. <laughs> it, it, that uh, a lot of that actually shaped uh, shaped my life, career, mindset, mm. and uh, ability to separate any type of anger, aggression, pain. Or violence towards me to for me to be able to think clearly and move forward through it because I was able to separate pain from uh, from uh, my physical uh, I, that physicality being in the moment mm -hmm. to where it's like okay well I'm not crippled I can still continue and move forward but uh, O over time, that started to annoy you because you would give me mm -hmm. beatings, and then I would just start laughing. I know. Yeah. Then I had to stop giving beatings. Cause I'm like, this is wasting my time and me out of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that helped me greatly. Uh, I don't think it's a, uh, a a disassociative disorder uh, or anything like that. It's just. It, like when I went into my fight career after playing semi pro football, I I was able to continue to push forward no matter how much pain I was in, no matter how tired or exhausted I was, I was just able to push forward. And then that all of that follows me in my relationships, uh, dealing with problems, uh, putting my uh, my emotions in the moment to the side before I react and I'm able to think clearly right then and there and not have to and, and not react to what's being put on the table having a bird's eye view separating myself uh, from whatever is going on and that helps me in every every bit and part of, of, of my life but I also made a conscious decision that I would be able to get that response out of my children without having to put my hands on them. Mm. So I, I, I did Which that with good. football. It, it was uh, more of a communication-based thing because I knew that I was so much bigger that I would hurt him. Right. And the same thing with the chunk. It's, I, we need to talk and communicate whatever frustrations are going on uh, some of the biggest things are you're doing something that you're gonna hurt yourself with we don't want that to happen so let's correct that now and then uh, there will be a whine or a cry or something like that 
And then once, uh, it, with the chunk, once he calms down, we'll walk through all the situations over and over again until he understands why he shouldn't be doing so. Right. And uh, that was, it was a little bit different with football. I would try to have those conversations with him, but with me being a, a absentee parent uh, or every other weekend you parent. It wasn't an absentee. I can't, yeah. You can't say an absentee parent. An absentee parent is a parent that's not there at all. Uh, right. You got him when you were supposed to get him at that time. So you wasn't an absentee parent. An absentee parent is a person that's not there at all. But you were there. When you got him, you were there for him yes. to do whatever needed to be done for him at that time. Right. So it was... Uh, it was a bit difficult where I would instill rules inside of him, but then the next time I see him, all of that stuff will be oh, wiped God. away. So it, that was a, a big struggle, uh, raising football. But once he was able to communicate better, that's what I put our foundation on. It, it had to be communication. I had to express to him everything uh, everything that I was thinking, not anything negative that I was thinking, but everything that I was thinking in a positive light, also trying to get him to be able to express his positive emotions, his negative emotions, right. when he's uh, feeling sad, when he's feeling happy. I was trying to get him to be able to verbalize all of that, and it seemingly worked. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, speaking about football, uh, what do you think about uh, when you went to go visit him at the Refuge Medical Office? I am so proud of him. I mean, he walks with his head held high, and I'm proud of what I do, what I've accomplished. And the only, I can say that because what my mother told me when I was pregnant with you, she said, hold your head up high and let no man put you under. So could nobody, my girlfriend, nobody can tell me nothing because, see, I had gotten approval from my mother who had gotten approval from God. So there was nothing. So I'm proud. He walks with his head very high and proud of what he's doing and what he's accomplished. Now, I don't know what how anybody else feel about it, but I think he's happy. His, his demeanor shows that he's very happy of what he's doing with his, with his life. Right. And nobody else can change it. Yeah. I don't care mm -hmm. what you say, it ain't being changed. <laughs> mm -mm. And he probably would have been a Southern. See, by, if I had moved, at, because I was supposed to move to North Carolina no. through my company. Didn't but but people was telling me if they are not going to pay for you to go, don't go. Mm -hmm. And those are people that was there for a while. And they say if they're not going to pay for you to move from here to down there, don't go. Because they, they're going to slap you in your face when gotcha. you get there. So, and I listened to people who had been there longer than me. I might have been there between three and five years. So you're talking people who had been there already. And they've seen it. The <clears throat> and they've seen it. And they've told me, if they're not going to pay, because we would have been gone by the time you turned three. Oh, wow. Because I had that job opportunity. But people said, if they're not moving you down there, don't go. Don't go. Oh, I'm talking. No, it's fine. <laughs> fine. Totally fine. <laughs> but I, but I would have been down there by the time you turned eight. I would have been down there because I had the job opportunity, but they wasn't going to pay for me to go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then I well, would have had to look for a house and everything else. So yeah, on your own. On my own. Right. And that's what they were saying. Don't do it. Okay. Unless they got you somewhere that you can stay. An opportunity came up maybe 20 years later again. 
to move to North Carolina. Oh, wow. They wanted me on the spot, but I couldn't go nowhere. They was like, well, you got the job. Can you start Monday? <laughs> no. I have no clue where you're at. I don't know the area, don't know where I'm going, but they had wanted me the next day. Oh, wow. the, I had got the job, don't even know, I never interviewed for the job, but I had the job. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Things happen like that. Mm -hmm. And your prayer and faith will guide you into some interesting places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what were your thoughts about seeing football at the refuge office? Um, I. Your mom said I was very proud of him, but I didn't think he would be any different than what I saw because in seeing him and listening to him talk, I knew he was going to be great at whatever he did with our conversations and him having a strong head and guidance from you. A lot of you pour out of him. So what you instilled in him is coming out of him. And he only wants what's going to be best for him. And when he got this opportunity, it was the greatest opportunity he could have. And I was so happy that he was going to move here because there were so many things he could have gotten into, right. like I said before. And not that he was headed in that direction, but you can be headed in a very positive direction but the negative forces come after you. That is true. So he needed it to get away, and at the time he did get away. Mm -hmm. So I'm very proud of him. Mm -hmm. And he just reminds me of you uh, <laughs> growing up. He has a lot of your characteristics. Mm -hmm. So it's great because you've been very strong-willed all your life <laughs> from a kid. Very strong-willed. And he is not as strong-willed as you are, but he has a strong will to do what it is he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. He did not allow anyone to make him change his decision about coming here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because he was here for, for a week first, and okay. then it was like, oh, I'm going back, going back where? I'm going back to live. Yes. So. And that that was a good thing, you know. Right. Moving, and I think as a grandparent and his other grandparent, because we weren't going back to the south, right? We were more city grandparents than the southern grandparents. See, if I had moved back down south, I would have been that southern grandparent, mm -hmm. but I never moved back down south, so he had more of the northern the city grandparents, you know, not that country grandparents. So that was the only thing I think he missed of being, that's why, just like when you went to North Carolina. Right, having for that your experience. First, right, and when he came here, it was like, wow, you know, it was a different experience. Yeah. But I couldn't give it to you because I didn't have it <laughs> to give. Understood. Yeah. Now, with your time here with the chunk, How's how's that been? A ball. <laughs> a ball. With y'all running back and forth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he don't know his grandma gonna run. She just <laughs> in and out. It don't care. Playing. So I'm having a ball with my my chunk. My pumpkin. I am having a ball. He just don't like you to tell him no. Oh no, <laughs> not at all. That that. that. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much the end of the okay. conversation for him. Yes. Yes, it is. I've noticed that. If you don't want <laughs> you tell him no. I'm like, and, and boo hoo. I'll be like, you ain't even crying for yep. nothing. A complete <laughs> fake cry. Uh -huh. I said, mm hmm. Because I've noticed them fake cries. Yes, we're talking about you, my chum. <laughs> Are you coming with over your, here? With your fake cries? <laughs> Come here. <laughs> You want to say hi to the people? Come. Come on over. My child, yeah. come here. Stop being shy. Well, my experience was when he was a month and a half. Yes. 
so I've had a great love for this little guy here from the time he was born and we spent such memorable moments together uh, while mom got a little rest yeah. and um, I just invited myself I forgot to ask <laughs> is it all right I come I just gave you guys some dates and then it hit me oh you didn't ask but um, I thank you for accepting me and allowing me to come and be a part of his life in the beginning of his life yes and we could pick up that great bond because um, I had retired mm -hmm. So it wasn't anything that could hold me back like it would hold his grandma back. Right. Um, not being able to get time and to get away for as long. So I was able to step in mm -hmm. <laughs> for us and um, be here well, to yeah. help out. Okay. So it's been amazing watching him grow. Yes. And I knew we needed to get here mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm so that we could see him before he got any older. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that we could build uh, that relationship, which he has built that relationship it's like terrible. he's known us from birth. Yeah. Oh, I got to do this, so, what I got to do. So he's a lot like you. He adapts very quickly. <laughs> yes. Uh, and now? Yeah, well, see? <laughs> yes, I do play with truck. <laughs> <laughs> so... To let them get back to playing while we're still here. Gonna call this a video. Thank y'all for watching. Thank you for watching. If y'all have any questions or anything, thank you. Uh, throw them in the comments and shalom. Shalom. You wanna say shalom, my junk? Shalom.